I'm here at the Space Life Sciences Lab in Florida to talk with NASA and CASIS researchers about amazing science happening up on the International Space Station. Each experiment aboard the International Space Station started off as just an idea, and your ideas can become real-life experiments up in space, too. Plants are very plastic in their growth, so they're very adaptable to their environment. Plants will grow pretty normally in, in space. So my name is Joya Massa, and I'm a life science project scientist at Kennedy Space Center. My favorite thing about the research that I do is being able to, to help grow food for the astronauts. For long duration missions, the packaged diet doesn't always store very well. So there are certain things that stay high quality and remain nutritious, but other things actually will degrade over time. And you know, this may not matter if we're just in low Earth orbit, like with the space station, but as we go to Mars and for longer duration missions, food quality and nutritional degradation becomes very important. We've often heard astronauts say that the one thing they really miss is having a fresh salad or a fresh vegetable. And even though when they thought they were coming, would come back, the first thing they'd want would be pizza or, or a cheeseburger or something, they all wanted a salad. So I think that's really telling. With veggie, we've started kind of a new set of research looking at food production for the diet. So veggie is a small plant growth chamber on the International Space Station, which is really designed to be kind of a, a, a garden for the astronauts. It's designed to be really low mass, also very low power. Veggie is using the ISS environment to control the atmosphere, the temperature, and the humidity. And then we have the ability to put our plants in there. And we've been growing in what we call plant pillows, which are small grow bags. They're essentially packets of substrate, which is a baked ceramic, and a controlled release fertilizer. And then we plant the seeds in there down here on Earth. We glue them in and we seal it up and they're dry. And so the astronauts add water and hydrate these when they get up there, install them in veggie, and the plants grow that way. And, and so the first crop that they got to eat was the outrageous red romaine lettuce. And it was really amazing. Um, the, the astronauts who were doing the harvest made speeches. Like they'd actually thought about this historic moment. One of the things we're very interested in is understanding what changes are going on at a genetic level, especially, you know, which genes are being transcribed, which are being, you know, turned on or off in response to a lack of gravity or to some of the other, you know, stresses that you might get in space. Another area of research that we've been thinking about for a while but haven't had the ability to do anything with is looking at custom space plants. Um, there's a lot of potential there because we are, we are growing in a really unique environment. There are certain stresses like no gravity. There are other things like we want to grow a lot of food in a small area um, and we want that food to be enhanced in certain nutrients that maybe the astronaut's packaged diet is low in. So there are certain things that could help the astronaut like increased levels of antioxidants. And that could be just a general thing or there might be very specific things like like vitamin K. You know we need more vitamin K. And so perhaps we could work on designing plants that'll grow really well in that environment just by tweaking their genes and their gene expression. So I think that's really an exciting opportunity and I think we'll see a lot more of that in the future. By entering the Genes in Space contest, your ideas designed to test questions about how microgravity affects life in space could be launched to the space station from right here at the Kennedy Space Center. Find out more about how to turn your ideas into real life experiments up in space.